Birth is actually not just a one day event where you have your baby. That birth is about making a baby, but it's also about making a mother and a father and a family. Hello, I'm Melanie the midwife and today's report on the research is about routine ultrasound for low risk pregnancies. And this video is part of the transformative birthwork series for my transformative birthwork online course. If you're interested in accessing the full transformative birthwork content, you can sign up at www.transformativebirthwork.com and I'll post a link below. Now I've noticed that more and more pregnant women are being offered routine ultrasounds towards the end of their pregnancy. Some of them are told that it's a growth scan or a well-being check. So I'm a little bit curious about the benefits and risks of this additional testing option. So I did a little bit of research and fortunately there is a recent large and good quality study on this topic. The study is called Effectiveness of Routine Third Trimester Ultrasonography to Reduce Adverse Perineal Outcomes in Low Risk Pregnancy and it's called the IRIS study. I'll put the full link in the text section below this video. It's open access so it means it's free to read and you can access it online um, and it's free. This study occurred at, in the Netherlands, at 60 midwifery practices and it had 13,046 women in it. They were over 16 years old, experiencing an uncomplicated pregnancy and growing only one baby. So all of the 60 practices offered usual care that involved just fundal height measurements and only offered clinical ultrasounds if they were indicated. After three, seven and 10 months, a third of these practices, so 20 of the original 60 practices that were in the study, were randomized to change their usual practice and put in place a new intervention. So now, as well as receiving usual care, women randomized to the intervention group were offered two additional routine biometry scans between 28 and 30 weeks, and also between 34 and 36 weeks gestation. The researchers wanted to see if the intervention strategy of introducing this ultra sound regime would make a difference to a cluster of severe adverse outcomes for the babies. And these included the number of babies that died, that required advanced assistance, or that became seriously unwell after birth. And they also want to see if there would be a change in severe maternal morbidity or a change in spontaneous labor and birth rates. Now the researchers were motivated to conduct this study because the Dutch Ministry of Health have considered introducing routine ultrasound in the third trimester of pregnancy, but they were unable to decide on if this would be an effective screening strategy because there was a significant lack of evidence. So any practitioner that was offering routine third trimester ultrasounds prior to 2019 was likely doing this without adequate evidence to support their practice. But back to the study. <laughs> what the researchers found was that the babies diagnosed as small for gestational age at birth were more often detected in the intervention group at 32% when they compared that to the usual care group which detected uh, the rate of SGA at 19%. So women receiving ultrasounds in the third trimester were significantly more likely for their baby to be diagnosed with small for gestational age or SGA than the usual care. But what's worth mentioning here is that this term small for gestational age or SGA is different to the more concerning circumstance of fetal growth restriction. The term SGA is often used interchangeably with fetal growth restriction, but they're different. Many small for gestational age babies can be constitutionally small but healthy. And any baby that's in the lowest 10% on the, on the growth scale is considered small for gestational age. Whereas fetal growth restriction is a pathological process. So not differentiating from the two is quite unsatisfactory. So what this study is saying is that SGA was diagnosed more often for women receiving the third trimester ultrasounds. However, that SGA is simply a variation of normal or the lower end of normal growth and not actually a complication. Fetal growth restriction is a complication, but it's not the topic of this 
particular research. So despite the increased diagnosis of SGA in the ultrasound group, the incidence of severe adverse perinatal outcomes was 1.7% for the ultrasound group and 1.8% for the usual care group. Remembering that these statistics are quite accurate because of the large number of women in the study. Therefore, the difference in outcomes at the end between the groups was not significant, except that women randomized to the ultrasound group showed a higher incidence of induction of labor, but maternal outcomes and other interventions didn't differ between the two strategies. So the authors state in the article that the number of babies with a birth weight below the 10th centile, which is the cutoff for the diagnosis of SGA, was 8%. And previous research suggests that most of these babies are likely to be constitutionally small rather than growth restricted and would not be at an increased risk of severe perinatal outcomes anyway. So the authors concluded that in low risk pregnancies, routine ultrasonography in the third trimester along with clinically indicated ultrasonography was associated with higher antenatal detection of SGA, but not with a reduced incidence of severe adverse perinatal outcomes compared with usual care alone. So the findings of this study do not support routine ultrasonography for the third trimester for low risk pregnancies. The take home message here is that adding routine ultrasound to routine antenatal care does not improve outcomes for women or their babies. And it actually increases induction rates without a correlating benefit to the baby, which is who the induction is supposed to be for. In short, this is an inappropriate use of internet intervention. It's unnecessary, wasteful, and increases the risk for the woman without proof of benefit to the baby. Essentially, this study is telling us that although ultrasounds might be able to diagnose that a baby is small, getting the baby out of its mother ahead of time does not improve outcomes for the baby. I'm Melanie, the midwife, and if you found this helpful, pass it on. And if you wanna go deeper in your learning journey about pregnancy and birth, subscribe to my YouTube channel or go to www.transformativebirthwork.com.